Hello, I'm Richard Lang, and today I'm speaking with Catherine Harding. Hello. Catherine, tell us how you met Douglas and what seeing means to you in your life. It's a long story. <laughs> um, well, as you well know, I am a child of the war, and the war started, I'm French, and the war started, I was seven years old, and Pretty soon I was thrown into a world of horror. Uh, I witnessed lots of sufferings. I went myself through lots of suffering, my family and myself. And well, um, I got pretty despair at some point as a teenager, not believing anything anymore of mm. what people were saying about God and uh, love behind the world and blah blah and all this i couldn't believe anything anymore and uh, i got pretty desperate and in great distress depression i was 15 16 years old and at some point i think i was ready to take my life and then one night uh, i was so sad and so it fallen down in a, in an abyss of tears and then suddenly at dawn suddenly I just came out of this I just as if I was going emerging from a, an abyss and uh, found myself in clear light uh, in bliss and uh, peace and uh, felt a presence a loving presence and I thought well that's it we are all mistaken. This is where we belong. This is uh, this is what I really am, and uh, we are mistaken by all what is going on outside in the world. Powerful experience. Yes, powerful experience, and it gave me the certainty that this was. Period. Mm. And I tried to uh, share it with my friends or my mother or. But no way people thought I was just a little bit crazy, mm. and that was teenage. Then I went, then of course, for a few months, I just, woof, I walked on a cloud, keeping this alive. Mm. But uh, then slowly, slowly, I, I was drawn into the outside world again and lost it, or thought I'd lost it. And then I went through my life, and... Uh, had lots of happiness and problems like everyone else but from time to time I was sent back to this spacious uh, infinite awareness luminous that is here but it was by chance I couldn't get I hadn't found the way of of going back there by myself and um, at some point of my life, I was in Paris and I had a friend who was a spiritual seeker. I was not. I was too much involved in making a living for my five children and I was not involved in uh, spiritual seeking, properly speaking. I met, I was interested. I met uh, Tibetan Buddhists and I, I was practicing yoga and I was interested, but I wasn't seeking someone, a guru or something like this. And this m a friend of mine one day came to me and said, I know what your position is, you won't believe anything, you except what you experience, but here is a book you should read. It's very interesting, it's called On Having No Head. And I said, okay, I'm going to try and get the book. And I didn't have time to get the book. Uh, and before this friend called me, uh, again and said, well, better than the book, the author of the book is coming to Paris next weekend and give a, giving a workshop. I'm going and I'll take you there. And I said, oh, don't bother, I don't want to go there. I'm not interested, uh, I know what is going to be rubbish and <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of words and uh, expensive meetings. No, 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 this guy is never asking for money practically. So, well, anyway, it happened that this friend of mine 
literally dragged me there. He came for me with his car and he dragged me to this workshop. And um, we entered and was had already started. And Douglas was speaking with such uh, humor and uh, the gift of a speaker, I must say. And he, he pretty soon started an experiment, which, which is mine. Now, my favorite experiment, which is a single eye. And my goodness. Noticing you're looking out yes, of this openness. Exactly. Noticing there is nothing. You don't have two eyes, but this infinite eye where the, the world is coming out of. Mm. And uh, awareness, aware, infinite space, and that's what you are. And um, I thought, that's it. That's what I saw 60 years ago. And, and this is a way to go back. Direct experience. Direct experience. Mm. And then he went on and on with all his experiments and I thought I was bowled over, absolutely bowled over. Uh, I thought this guy is really genius. A genius because also he kept repeating, don't believe a world of what I'm saying. Test it. You are the authority. Good Lord, that was the first time in my life I heard <laughs> this. Someone telling you, you are your own authority. And um, at the end of the workshop, I went up to the platform to where he was uh, left, left alone, in fact, and I told him, I think you are a genius, this is extraordinary, I want to help, what can I do? And he said, well, you seem to, pre to speak English fairly well, so I've written several books and maybe you could help me uh, translate, have one or two translated. And then we got, I got involved, uh, a few weeks later he called me to ask me to come and uh, be his interpreter in a workshop in France, in Dijon. I, never seen, I had never done this in my life. I was scared to death, and, but immediately it went all right. We just worked together mm. um, as if one. And um, after that he invited me to a workshop in the summertime and then we decided I would come to where he lived in Nacton to see his books. And I never left then. I went there and I practically never left. I just left to go. I think I went there with uh, three suitcases. <laughs> and I left everything in France because I knew it was, you know, Richard, as if I had been a sailing boat, sailing over the ocean of life. And then suddenly I, I found my port, my, mm. the harbor, the port, mm. I don't know. Mm. I didn't have to go any further. Mm. And uh, Your life had changed. Well, I found that I couldn't, I could go, I, I could reach this infinite space that I am, that you are, that we all are at will. And that uh, what Douglas kept saying that made people smile, uh, I'm not what I look like, I'm not only different but I'm the opposite, and became so true, so um, obvious mm. that we really imagine a head above our shoulders and there is none. There is all the time or nothing but the world. And now I have this lovely, your lovely living room over my shoulder, your beautiful trees out there, and you. And then we are one because we're trading faces. Mm. I have your face and none, none other. You were in the world of seeing from that moment on. I mean, Douglas yes. was seeing and you were doing lots of workshops. So exactly. it was right on the front burner for you the exactly. whole time. Exactly. And life with him was really, really, really beautiful. Even, I don't say it was absolutely uh, um, you know, ideal. Now we had we had deep dons like all other couples, but immediately um, having taken the 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 habit to disappear in mm. favor of the world, in favor of, in favor of the other, um, when anything happened due to our differences as little ones, little persons. Um, immediately the reflex is to come back here and see that in fact there is no one here mm. and uh, 
accept the other one as he is because of his own conditioning, knowing that you have your own conditioning as little persons. Mm. Mm. And that's so useful in mm. a life of a couple, mm. which bring, makes up for humor. If you end up laughing instead of, of uh, ding donging. <laughs> And so, uh, Douglas died a few years ago now, and what, what is that like for you now that he's gone? Yeah, well it's been very, very hard. I still miss him as, a, as, as little Douglas, but he's with me in this immensity and awareness. I can really feel his presence within me, but it was difficult, very difficult. I've been, it was like being put in a inside a shaker and being shaken all over and not, I couldn't get out of the shaker. I had no place to go. I felt uh, homeless in every sense of the word, except that then it made me find and see that this is my only home, really, mm -hmm. because I didn't feel well anywhere. And um, I having to leave, having having to leave um, my, the house where I had been living with Douglas for many reasons. I had to leave, and uh, I was just, you know, tossed over, and um, it took five years. So you, during that difficult time, you kept coming back home. Exactly, I kept coming back home, and the single eye is so useful because you just have to open this here and see that you are this immensity and dissolve in this land of everlasting clarity. Just dis dissolve, let yourself, or let your being go down, down, down and dissolve in it. And then you are at peace and you find that the light is within yourself and the joy of being is within yourself, wherever you are, whatever happens. And this is uh, this never changes. Mm. Things out there change. My life has gone like a film and Douglas's appearance has gone. But here you remain with everything, past, present and future. It's, it's in here. And um, So that's, a, that's two big changes, meeting Douglas. It was a huge and, change yes. and then Douglas dying. And then losing Douglas. Losing yes. Douglas. Yes. And since then, uh, you've been, since he died, seeing has proved itself as a, a practical well, help. I don't know what I would have done with it, really, mm. Richard. I, um, yes, I don't know what I would have done. It helped me so much, and it still helps me, because, as I said, Douglas is still present within me. I, I've, I've loved him so much, and I still love him so much. But I also see that Little Catherine is not with me for a long time anymore, and this helps. I'm not what I look like, and now I live it, really, because I, I'm watching, helpless, this body called Catherine decay, slowly decaying, and I can't do anything about it. It's going. And yet here, I am still zero year. I'm ageless. I feel so much energy. So it's obvious that this is going to go, but this is different. This has nothing to do with that. <laughs> and uh, it's very, it's a great comfort. It's a great uh, freedom, liberation. Mm -hmm. I, I less and less, I less and less identify with this envelope here, mm -hmm. this case. I realize really that the one that I am, that you are, the one has been using this envelope to appear and do something in this world and as many say, to discover, <laughs> rediscover himself or itself through my, through, through Catherine Little consciousness. You're, you're back in France now, but um, you're continuing to give workshops and share seeing. Uh, yes, I do. I, 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 why, why do I do this? Because I think it's such an instrument, a good instrument, a good way to freedom, 
and to peace and joy of life, of being. So when I go whenever I'm asked to go, some people invite me to come and share, or I share it when I feel that someone is ready for it or something tells me I can, I can just introduce this in a way also. But I'm never imposing it on anyone. Mm. I don't. Some, I have lots of friends, dear friends, who are not ready to hear about this, and that's all right. And you've also got many friends uh, in France and in England that you share this with. I've got hundreds of friends yeah. in France and elsewhere. Elsewhere. We are a community. We are really a community. Mm. And now I'm going to settle down in France. I've just chosen my... And my house is going to be a place where anyone who wants to come can come and uh, just be, just be with ne next to me or share if they want to or be one. Because I think this way is the way that, the way to the ground of, the ground for love. I'm not saying it's love immediately, but I'm saying that when you let yourself sink into this light, this that you are, this clear, aware light that you really, really are, then you can't help being open to everyone else and ready to love everyone. Um, you least, see, they are least, you. At least to embrace them mm. as they are. Mm. So that's why I think it's so precious. Because um, I've always been impressed by what Jesus said, love each other. But then when you are shut up in your little person, you think you are only this. It's very difficult to, mm. very difficult to love the others because they are so different and there are arguing, arguments and uh, but when you see you are one you see there is yes that you are both you are the little one which is important but base more important and basically you are this the one mm -hmm. here then it's easy to accept everyone and uh, to love them and it changes your relationships you I've just met uh, on the French beach, I was walking and I met a group of teenagers, very angry teenagers, coming from the, the suburbs. And uh, one of them was wearing a t-shirt with life is hell in French. I, I was really shocked and I found myself just in front of him, so I couldn't help asking him, do you really think what is on your t-shirt? And he said, yes I do, of course. I said, why do you think so? Oh, because really this world is horrible and everybody hates us because we are uh, not fr we are from Africa, North Africa, uh, some other countries, but we've been brought here and, and then suddenly we started talking and I felt so much, um, well, love for them. Mm. I thought, well, these are my children mm. and they felt it, so they immediately changed no aggressivity, they smiled, and and I'm sure this is the answer to mm. As soon as even someone aggressive feels that you are open to, and you respect mm -hmm. him or her, and you accept him or her as they are, they also, they also um, let go. And it's just the truth, isn't it? That it we're is built open for each other. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, I couldn't, if, you know, if I wanted, I couldn't put up a face here mm. now to, mm. to, to make a barrier to mm. prevent your, your face from coming here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you, Catherine. Well, this is it, and well, I just want to add that Douglas was a wonderful person. Yes. On top of being a genius. Yes. And uh, he really was a wonderful person. What a great gift uh, to the world. Uh, yes, and to me, I'm so grateful I met him. Yes. And what a great gift to the world. Yes. yes. So simple, so accessible. Exactly. So practical. That's what he did, because he kept saying himself, I'm not saying anything else that has been 
saved, saved from for 2,000 years in the traditional ways. The only thing that he, his contribution is the, the experiments which make you perceive by yourself, for yourself, mm. without an intermediary. Mm. Provided you are open to it, of course. Mm. So, and uh, I thank you, Richard, for all the work you're doing because mm -hmm. you are now. Now I can rest. I'm eighty, and I'm going to do what <laughs> I can. But I know that you are doing the job, <laughs> and so is Rosé in France, and mm -hmm. many, many of yes, our young other friends. friends yes. Many of our young friends yes. are going on, trying and spreading this message, which is so precious. Mm -hmm. Well, the rest is not within our hands. <laughs> no. It's the one. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So. Hmm.